Hello everybody, welcome to the show. I'm going to try something new today. I'm going to analyze Polkadot in a brand new framework. And many of you have been on me to analyze all of your favorite altcoins. And I'm beginning with my next favorite. You already know in full disclosure, heavy into Bitcoin, Ethereum, Cardano, little engine coin and Binance BNB token. So they're the five that I have. And this or VeChain could be number six. Now VeChain is coming out for this analysis, but please share your feedback in the comments below what you think of the structure and format. Again, I'm trying to be as comprehensive as possible, make the best content on the internet. So enjoy. And as usual, let's jump right in. Math, money, freedom. You know the name of the game. And disclaimer, none of this is investment advice. I'm going to show some price predictions at the very end and a lot of conclusions. But again, do your own research. And this is edutainment. So as usual, this is my new, no, not as usual. This is brand new, actually. This is my new Invest Answers token valuation process, where I go through a 10-step process and I look at what the token does, how it plays, industries it can disrupt, the ranking against other tokens, growth rates, value propositions, special source, etc., the tech and developers, the ecosystem, the longevity, like how long they've been in business, and at the very end, price prediction. Ultimately, stage 11, I follow everything by my usual conclusions. So always stay to the end and get to the conclusion. So let's blast through this and let me know what you guys think. So first of all, for those of you who do not know, the background of Polkadot, it was founded by Gavin Wood, who was the former co-founder and CTO, Chief Technology Officer of Ethereum. So this guy knows Ethereum inside and out, which is a huge feather in the cap for DOT as I'm going to call it going forward, DOT is short for Polkadot. And his vision was a multi-chain framework that basically everybody could tie into. So quick background for those of you who don't know the background of Polkadot, and I'm going to call it DOT from here on in. It was founded by Gavin Wood, the former co-founder and chief technology officer of Ethereum. So this guy knows his stuff. His vision was a heterogeneous multi-chain framework which I'll go a little bit into as we go through this presentation. And the focus is to support Web 3.0. So Web 3.0 is full decentralization. Web 1.0 is commerce. Web 2.0 is social, etc. You get the idea. This is going to be very, very disruptive. And the first test of this, the Canary Kusama network, is independent of Polkadot, but runs on early unordered versions of Polkadot. So that's a little bit of the history in 20 seconds or less. Now, Let's go into exactly what it does. So the end game is to enable Web 3.0, which is a very big challenge to overcome. But these guys think they can do it. Now that is a fully disintermediated and decentralized internet. So if you think about the internet you guys use every single day, it is very centralized. And this is going to break all of that apart. So also part of the vision is to create and enable the possibility for separate blockchains to communicate with one another, to be able to pull off certain things and do everything in a very timely, secure and scalable manner. A lot of the challenges that exist with the blockchains, this will overcome all of that. So a quick Polkadot example, just to put some context. So it is an integration methodology. And for those of you out there that know technology, the most important thing in technology is integration, the ability to pass data. If data is stuck in a silo or in a process or in a system, it is worthless. And these guys are trying to overcome probably the toughest problem in technology today. Now, imagine a smart contract on Ethereum triggered by an Oracle like Chainlink that triggers a payment on Bitcoin network that demands to be paid in Litecoin, which would require a conversion. All of this is an example of four separate blockchains that require to pull off one story. And that is the special source of Polkadot and how they plan to fit in. And again, it's extremely powerful if it's possible. So let's talk a little bit about what I call how it plays. So it is a sharded multi-chain network. And just for those who don't know, sharding means basically breaking things up into individual segments or shards, like chopping up a carrot. Now, it is coordinated by a central relay chain that processes data and transactions on several chains in parallel, which makes it very fast and very efficient. And these are called parachains. Think parallel chain, 
parachain. And you can earn tokens in three different ways. First of all, as a government's role, and as a staking role, and as a bonding role. And bonding is kind of a new concept for many in this space. So just to dive into these real quick, as a reminder to everybody, staking is the process of receiving cryptocurrency as a reward for holding funds in a digital wallet to support the operations of a blockchain. Bonding involves locking in a certain number of tokens for a specified period. And tokens are used by the Polkadot community for governance to vote on changes in the network, kind of in some ways similar to, to Bitcoin. So it's important to think about, oh, those three different functions, because the bonding one is relatively new to this world. Now, let's look at some target industries and what I can really interrupt. Now, Polkadot focuses on enterprise and business to business financial applications that require bank level security, stability and other apps. So I'll step out for one second. As you know, one of the reasons I've been so bullish on Ethereum from the very beginning is because of DeFi, the ability to completely interrupt and disrupt all things financial services, insurance, real estate, banking, you name it. But this also has other applications in other areas beyond finance. So there's gaming, there's payments, cybersecurity, supply chain management, network, and the whole IoT or Internet of Things, insurance, even private transportation and ride sharing. And that's going to become very, very important in the future as well with the advent of things like robo taxis. So Super exciting time, and this has the potential to work across all of these industries in a big way. Now let's look at the scorecard ranking of where Polkadot is today. It is ranked number eight in terms of market cap up against some of those other players. Now, what is important to know is Polkadot is currently smaller than Cardano, smaller than XRP, smaller than Tether and Binance. But the ones I'll be focusing on a little bit today will be Binance and Cardano as I think they are, beyond Ethereum, very, very important for this analysis too, especially when it comes to pricing and benchmarking. So what are the growth opportunities? So what makes this whole thing very special is four different components. One is the relay chain, which is the heart of Polkadot. So it brings about all of the shared security and cross-chain interoperability. The parachains I discussed earlier, these are the sovereign blockchains that have their own tokens. The para threads, which is a subset of the para chains, and these basically operate like a pay as you go model. So, if you don't need a full time 24 7 para chain, you can deploy a para thread, which is very helpful. And bridges, the most important thing that supports all the connectivity, this allows the para chains and the para threads to connect and communicate with other blockchains, just like Bitcoin and Ethereum and Chainlink and all those other ones as well. So that's kind of the rough architecture and where the growth opportunity lies. Now, the value proposition, first of all, you got to talk about the problem statement first. So blockchains typically today operate as separate islands of data with little way of leveraging the information that the other network possess. And that is the huge problem. As I mentioned, data as an island is worthless. And this plans to overcome all of that. So Polkadot tackles key issues of blockchain interoperability, ability to communicate information from private blockchains to public networks and vice versa. So think about that going from private to public and back. And also introducing a new era in scalability, interoperability and security. Again, they are taking on a lot of stuff. And if they can pull it off, boom, it's off to the races. So what's also very important in terms of value proposition is they can handle transactions at scale because of their architecture. Now, uh, it was very clear, Gavin, the founder, he knew the challenges with Ethereum back in the day. And before EIP 1559, which is coming in July, Ethereum can only handle about 15 to 20 transactions per second. Whereas Polkadot claim they can do 166,000. So it is wicked fast. I mean, we're talking faster than Visa and MasterCard and a whole bunch of other stuff combined. And that's powerful. Speed can kill, but it could also be very helpful in this world as well. So that is a huge value prop. Now, in terms of what I like to look at as well is the technology and developer community. They have over 2,600 developers that sit in the substrate technical channel. That's the basically the underlying architecture of the whole platform. And they have uh, developers in some of the top places on earth, including ETH, which is uh, a very brilliant university in Zurich, Switzerland. And I knew a lot of people that went to ETH, so it is a top-notch university. Now, what's also very important is if you look at 
the number of developers and the growth in these developers, Polkadot is second only to Ethereum, which is a huge plus as well, because the more developers, the better the technology. Real simple. And what Gavin has the ability to do is promise a very ambitious future, which attracts the best minds in the world as well. And um, some people say that is different to some of the other platforms as we go forward. So let's look at the ecosystem real quick. I'm not going to dwell on this, but basically they have built up a very powerful ecosystem and there's over 350 projects running now, maybe 400 at this stage, but they have key partners across all areas of oracles and DeFi and smart contracts, privacy and scaling and wallets and gaming and so much more. And they've only just begun. So that's the good news. Now let's look at one of the negatives in my opinion, is the track record and longevity. So Polkadot's founder Gavin Wood first introduced this via white paper in 2016, and they just launched the token at the end of 2020. So this whole platform is less than six months old, and it's a very, very brief history, and it doesn't have a track record for comparison, etc. And this makes it very, very risky. My job here is to always point out risk. So the fact that something is so young and so untested and unproven is kind of scary. But to counterbalance that, we have Gavin, who's got the experience of Ethereum, which does work and has been working very successfully for five years. And we've just seen the explosion in the Ethereum price over the past couple of weeks. So that is goodness, 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 but temper it with a little bit of conservative conservatism as well. Now onto the favorite part, price prediction. So this is hard to predict price because I can't really look at existing revenue streams and models and network effect, etc. So I had to do a couple of things that are a little bit different. So first of all, I always like to look at the supply. Now there is no maximum supply. It is inflationary, unlike Bitcoin, which is deflationary. And there are currently just over a billion in tokens in issuance. So the supply technically is a little bit of elastic and can grow. And that's one of the things I also don't like as well, because when there's infinite supply, that can always kind of compress the price. But counterbalance it as well, a lot of people stake their polka dot, which means it takes a lot of supply off the market, which actually helps price. But just bear that in mind as we go forward. So I created a few different models like I always do. And this one was a bit of a challenge. It's very difficult to price. So what I did was a couple of things. I made up some theoretical models myself. So the first one is what I call the dot to Ethereum ratio. So I look at the Ethereum model and comparing that ratio. So basically at the high, we were at a 0 0.024 ratio of dot to Ethereum. And if we go back to that level, that would bring about a 2.59x from where we are today because we're actually at the 0.009245 mark today. So that would bring us back to a price, a maximum price of about $94.57, which is quite impressive. So that's the first model. Now let's look at the second model I put together. This is basically assuming if Polkadot can execute and pull off everything that, they're, that they say they plan to do, there's no doubt in my mind that Polkadot should have 40% of the Ethereum market cap based on today's numbers. And this is, of course, a future price prediction. And 40% of that, the market cap would be about 182 divided by 34 multiplied by 36, which is about $193 a token, which is a 5.3x from here. Again, big stretch, requires perfect execution and pulling off the vision of what they, what I covered in the beginning. So we'll see. The third model is a lot of people believe that Polkadot could be bigger than Binance, the Binance chain. So I hold BNB and I do not hold DOT at this stage, but many expect the DOT capitalization to overtake Ripple and Binance. So conservatively saying it can catch up to BNB performance this year, it would take us up from a 343% gain, which is what they currently have year to date up to the Binance return, which is about 1,581%. And that'll be a 4.6X or $165. Now, bear in mind, the cap should technically be 3X because if you take the Binance market cap divided by 
the market cap of Polkadot, that would be a 3x. So between 3 to 4.6x would kind of help them catch up to Binance and overtake Binance. I think it's going to take a long time for that to happen. Um, and they need to start executing and delivering on their promises and they're not right quite there yet. So stay tuned for the conclusions. So the final piece is uh, some conservative price predictions based on some top consensus of analysts out there. That'd be a year-end price of $66 in 2021, 118 in 2022, 140 in 2023, all the way up to $200 in 2025. And I know sometimes I give my very conservative price predictions and people go, no, it's going to be worth $1,000. But I'd rather, again, be super conservative and take everything together at once. So I've put all these models together as well as usual and came up with an average to think about where this could go. So again, not investment advice, but do your own research. So when I put all these models together, the conservative model we just covered, the dot to ETH ratio model, the 40% of ETH market capitalization, and matching the BNB performance, and average them all, I get a price target of 2021 of about $129, and that would be at the top of the bull market, of course. 2022, 167, 203 in 2023. That's funny, 2023, $203. That is pure coincidence. 2024 will be $248 and 2025, $303. And what's interesting, that's $303. It's about an 8x from where we are now. So an 8x over the next five years conservatively. And also when you look at these numbers, just for simplicity, you can take the price of 303 and that equates to about 303 billion or any of the other models. So net net, the market capitalization of Polkadot, I believe, could be somewhere in the realm of, conservatively, 200 billion to 303 billion compared to where it is today. So, as usual, conclusions. Thank you for staying till the end. And it was a lot of ground to cover. So first of all, many think this is a Swiss-born blockchain of blockchains, often be said to be the Ethereum killer. So is it the Ethereum killer? I'm not sure. It has yet to be proven to me. And if you value staking rewards, then you will like Polkadot. So it could be the next 10x altcoin, as I showed you, 8x conservatively as possible in five years. And the Polkadot ecosystem is very impressive. So again, based on all my models and including the conservative growth rates, it could be up to a $303 price by 2025 or an 8x from here. The other thing as well, I'd like to just temper the passion. We are still very early. They have 350 projects running, maybe 400 at this stage, far more than Cardano. But the problem is, it's, it's still so much more proof of concept is required. They have no smart contracts as yet, etc. So net-net, as far as I'm concerned, Ethereum is still the safer play for now. And I know that many will ask me, so trying to dispel these questions in advance, where can I buy it? So the three places you can buy, Polkadot, Coinbase, Binance, and Kraken, probably a few others. I think you can get it on Voyager now as well. And uh, But there are ones that I definitely do know of. And Polkadot have their own JS wallet that users can uh, download for free. And it also can be downloaded onto the Ledger Nano S or the Ledger Nano X. So that is Polkadot. Again, the conclusion is we are early. They have a very impressive vision. I'll be monitoring it very closely and as usual, updating my price models as they start getting more wins under their belt and start proving out the model and the vision. So let me know if you like the structure and format and the price prediction models. If you have any other ideas for price prediction models or where you believe the Polkadot price will go, drop a comment below. So as usual, big thank to everybody on Patreon. I love working with you every day. The coolest bunch of people ever. Thank you for everything. And uh, finally, if you want more, hit the like and subscribe. See you all soon. See you tomorrow. Bye. Oh, one final thing. If you have whatever your next priority is, I'm going to do VeChain next and then Solano. But if I hear a lot of requests for something else, let me know and I'll do that as well. Okay. Thanks all.